Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. <coughs> Salatu vesselamu ala Resulillah ve ba'du. Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah. So I'm actually doing some uh, cleaning of my desktop. And I had this faida for a long time. I actually wanted to make a video of it. But I told myself before I delete it of my desktop, at least let me put it on my YouTube. So I can kind of you know, save it, and perhaps somebody might benefit from this. The reason why I saved this is because it was a, it was a very beneficial faida, and I came across while I was in Mauritania this year for about three months, and it heavily, it, it resonated a lot with me, and it was like a aha moment when I read it. And it has to do with with uh, self optimization, which is something I'm very passionate about, and everything that has to do with with discipline and 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 just being the best version of yourself. So this book is uh, a book by Ibn Al Qayyim called Al Fawaid, the benefits and. And here, Ibn Qayyim, he says, he says, قبول المحل لما يوضع فيه مشروط بتفريغه من ضده That the, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let me translate this on ChatGPT real quick. So, so the first, the first, uh, paragraph says that the acceptance of a place for what is put in it is conditional upon emptying emptying it of its opposite this is true for physical entities and likewise for beliefs and desires meaning in simple english or actually let me tell chat to use simpler english for a second now 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 it's better so a place can only accept something new if it's the first if if it is first emptied of its opposite this is true for physical like this happens for physical things and the same for beliefs and desires so Ibn Al-Qayyim he says that that you can only fill something up with something only after you remove everything of what's of what it contains and he says that this happens for for basically you know uh, tangible things and 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 for for even the uh, what yani yani beings Nam, whether it's a human being, whether it's a child, adult, whatever it might be. And as well, it happens as well with beliefs. Nam, and he's going to further explain. So he says, فَإِذَا كَانَ الْقَلْبُ مُمْتَلِئًا بِالْبَاطِلِ اَعْتِقَادًا وَمَحَبَّةً لَمْ يَبْقَ فِيهِ لِعْتِقَادِ الْحَقِّ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ مَوْضِعًا He says that if the heart is full, of false beliefs and love for the wrong things, there won't be any space for true beliefs and love for what is right. So, and he's gonna explain further again, but if your heart is full of just crap that you consume from social media and love for things, oh, I love these YouTuber, he's not Muslim and um, you know, he doesn't really talk about Islam or anything beneficial, but I just like him. I like his personality. It doesn't benefit me in anything. I don't know, he's just funny. So the more you fill up your heart with all of this uh, love for these things and love for this entertainment with no fa'ida and, uh, and as well with beliefs, like some people, they build beliefs based on whatever, based on like, especially nowadays on social media, people build beliefs based on quotes. They find a quote that's gone viral. Oh yeah, this is, that's it, man. That's, 
That's what I believe as well. Or they, or they watch a motivational speech, a motivational clip, and for whatever reason it resonates with them. It's not based on the Quran or the Sunnah at all, but they take it as a new belief. And the thing is, they might not even have Islamic knowledge and their foundations might not be solid. So they watch this motivational speech that might be against the foundations of Islam. And now they take this as beliefs. So what this does is it corrupts your heart and it doesn't let what's right, like actual knowledge, come in. Now, and he's going to further explain this. So he says, Kama anna lisani, that I think there's a mistake here. إذا اشتغل بالتكلم بما لا ينفع لم يتمكن صاحبه من النطق بما ينفعه إلا إذا فرغ لسانه من النطق بالباطل He says that in the same way if the tongue is busy speaking things that are useless a person won't be able to say what is good or useful. So if you're always talking about something that's unnecessary or whatever is not beneficial, obviously you, your tongue cannot do two things at the same time. So you're gonna be talking, so you won't be able to talk about what's about the truth, about about haq, about what's beneficial. Then he says, Lam yumkin. Um, وَكَذَلِكَ الْجَوَارِحِ Same as your limbs, your, your body parts. إِذَا اشْتَغَلَتْ بِغَيْرِ الطَّاعَةِ لَمْ يُمْكِنْ شُغُلُهَا بِالطَّاعَةِ إِلَّا إِذَا فَرَّغَهَا مِنْ ضِدِّهَا Same thing with your, with your body parts. If you always in the gym or you always walking outside or you always hanging around with these people or you always working or you always, whatever you do with your limbs, if they busy with that thing, that is not ibadah, that is not seeking knowledge, that is not, you know, doing actions that are a worship of Allah, then you won't be able to, to busy them, to busy your limbs with what's beneficial to, with what's a worship. So he says, فَكَذَلِكَ الْقَلْبُ الْمَشْغُولُ بِمَحَبَّةِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِرَادَتِهِ وَالشَّوْقِ إِلَيْهِ وَالْأُنْسِ بِهِ لَا يُمْكِنْ شُغُلُهُ بِمَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَإِرَادَتِهِ وَحُبِّهِ وَالشَّوْقِ إِلَى لِقَائِهِ He says the same thing if your heart is busy with the love of something that is not uh, that is not a Allah and wanting it and longing and 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 always being inclined to this to this thing then it won't be able for you to love Allah Azzawajal and to busy your heart with it and wanting to to meet him now every muslim should aim or should have this deep desire of wanting to meet allah so everything he builds everything in his life is is done with the intention and directly wanting to meet allah so the same thing, if your heart loves something that is not that, then you won't be able to fill it up with, with the love of Allah and, and wanting to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. You're going to be busy with liking this YouTube channel that, that does something that is, doesn't have nothing to do with the deen. Or you are 
so caught up with these Netflix series and you want to watch every single one of them because it's so interesting. That's as well your heart loving something other than than Allah Azza wa Jal. Or you follow these, um, whatever, this personality, this Cristiano Ronaldo, you follow in every single thing he does in his life. Again, you love him, you're filling up your heart with 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 love for something other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So, so the more you fill it up with different types of loves towards things that are irrelevant to your purpose as a Muslim, loving Allah Azza wa Jal, then you won't be able to fill it up with, with the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then he says, Naam, that this won't happen illa bi tafriqihi min ta'allukihi bi ghayri. Naam, so he says also, he says the heart needs to be cleared of these attachments first. The tongue won't, won't remember Allah and the body won't serve Him unless they are emptied of remembering and serving other things. Now let me read this, make sure that ChatGPT translated it correctly. He says, وَلَا حَرَكَةً لِلِّسَانِ بِذِكْرِهِ وَالْجَوَارِحِ بِخِدْمَتِهِ إِلَّا إِذَا فَرَّغَهَا مِنْ ذِكْرِ غَيْرِهِ وَخِدْمَتِهِ فَإِذَا امْتَلَأَ الْقَلْبِ بِالشُّغُلِ بِالْمَخْلُوقِ وَالْعُلُومَ الَّتِي لَا تَنْفَعَ Naam, so he says, so so he says that unless they are emptied, unless unless the heart is emptied of remembering and serving other things, unless the body is emptied of remembering and serving other things, or basically this is the the so the full sentence is the heart needs to be clear of these attachments first. Of these att attachments, as we said, that are not beneficial, that doesn't align with the purpose of the Muslim. The tongue won't remember Allah, and the body won't serve Him unless they are emptied of remembering and serving other things. Then he says, when the heart is filled with distractions and, and useless knowledge, there will be no space left to think about Allah and learn about His names, qualities, and teachings. Okay, let me let me get this the rest. But this is uh, this is, <sighs> you know, one thing that I'm pondering on right now is that when I first came across this this faida, my iman was higher, and I was I had a very strong relationship with the Quran at that time in the tafsir. So when I read this, it hit me so heavy because at that time when I was 100% busy with the Quran, anything that wasn't the Quran, I looked at it as a distraction. And when my heart was, was thinking about, for example, or oh, let me see this YouTube channel where they uploaded at that, that's new. Right, it might it, it might be a business YouTube channel. It might be something that is not necessarily haram, but it, it just doesn't align with building that relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. So, so I truly seen what Ibn Al Qayyim meant because I was living it. Now, I mean, the reason why I'm saying this is because right now. You might hear this and it might not hit how it should hit you because you have never experienced it. And this is one of the things that I realized in my first and early years of, of practicing. I used to read a hadith, I used to read stories that happened in the times of the Salaf and so on of uh, perhaps people that became misguided or perhaps you know there was a story of uh, this Mu'addin who who uh, I think Ibn Al-Qayyim, Wallahu A'lam, don't quote me on this, but it was a story reported that there was a Mu'addin going to the top of the of the Manara of the Masjid to make Adhan, and he used to see a, a woman, a Christian woman, putting up uh, the clothes to dry out until he f 
from from you know filling his heart and through his eyes with the interest and the curiosity about this woman it became a a po an, a a uh, some I forgot how to pronounce it in English a push push poison it became poison to his heart to the point where he actually went and approached the woman and the woman said if you don't accept Christianity and and leave Islam you won't be able to marry me so he did so and, and he left Islam so what I'm trying to say with this is that in the beginning when I used to read these stories and this hadith and so on I read it I didn't understand them fully understand them until I experienced different things in, in my life. So, and this brings me as well to mention one of the things that I realized when these past three months that I spent very close with the Quran when I was in Mauritania. And for some context, um, I was in Egypt when I was 18, 19, right? I remember I had the goal of memorizing the Quran before 20. At 20, I had the goal, I didn't memorize it yet, I had the goal to memorize it before 25, then before 30. Now I have it, <laughs> the intention is to memorize before 35. The point is that I was somehow in a rush to memorize the Quran. And and for long years now, all of these years that I was running, uh, you know, businesses and, and trying to to seek risk, I I had this ongoing guilt of not having a close relationship with the Quran. So now this time when I went to these past three months when I was in Mauritania, you know, I was reading the, the tafsir. Obviously at this point I have already experienced a lot in life I've gone through a lot and the Quran this time with the level of matur maturity that I've gained it just hit different like like never before so to say that sometimes knowledge will you will read a hadith you will read a qual of of the ulama and so on and it will not hit you how it should hit you because you, you're not ready yet. You haven't experienced enough. You haven't lived enough, long enough yet to actually um, to actually see certain aquatic certain sayings how how you should see them. Now, hopefully, that makes sense. Is something that, um, and you know, this as well shows you that the Quran, you will never get tired of reading the Quran because every time you will read an ayah, you will read the tafsir of an ayah, it will hit you away. You will go to the world, you will experience different things, and you will come back to it and read the tafsir again. And now, those experiences and those, you know, those difficulties you went through life. Now you will read the same tafsir again and it will hit you in a whole different way. And then you're going to go again in the world, experience again different things, come back to the tafsir, read the same ayah, it will hit you a different way. So, so going back to the text, so I don't make this video too long, because one point, is being, one point brings me to another. And then he says, وَسِرُّ ذَلِكَ The secret of all of that, أن إصغاء القلب كإصغاء الأذن. That means that the إصغاء of the heart, the listening of the heart, the the attention that the heart gives to something, is just like the ear. فإذا صغى إلى غير حديث الله. لم يبقى فيه إصغاء ولا فهم لحديثه. He will have no room to listen to or understand his words. I mean, if he listens to anything other than the words of Allah, 
you will have no room to listen to or understand his words. So then he says, فَإِذَا كَمَا إِذَا مَالَ إِلَى غَيْرِ مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ لَمْ يَبْقَ فِيهِ مَيْلٌ إِلَى مَحَبَّةِ فَإِذَا نَطَقَ الْقَلْبُ بِغَيْرِ ذِكْرِهِ لَمْ يَبْقَ فِيهِ مَحَلٌ لِلنُّقِ بِذِكْرِهِ كَالْلِسَانِ He says, and if the heart speaks of anything other than Allah's remembrance, there will be no place left for speaking of Him, just as the tongue would be. And this is so deep because he, Ibn Qayyim here, obviously his way of writing is so eloquent that he says if the heart speaks of about something, just like if, you're, if your tongue is speaking about something, I'm speaking about this right now. So I cannot be speaking about this and at the same time speaking about something that's not beneficial. So the same your your heart, if your heart is speaking, meaning thinking, naam, and um, and this brings me to the ayah where Allah says just in the Quran, uh, don't they have hearts that they that they think with, that they reason with? So some scholars they say that the, the reasoning and, and your your thoughts are actually in your heart, not in your brain, as many believe. So so this explains this, which is that if your heart is if you if you consume certain information, whether it's through talking to people, whether it's through 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 videos, whether it's through this Netflix series you'll be watching, or whether it's through whatever it might be then your heart will be thinking about it now and, and reminding you about it and so if if your heart is full with all of these things that are not beneficial you won't be able to be constantly thinking about Allah Azzawajal. then he says وَلِهَذَا فِي الصَّحِيحَ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ لأن لأن يمتلئ جوف أحدكم قيحا حتى يريه خير له من أن يمت من أن ينت أن يمتلئ شعرا فبين أن الجوف يمتلئ بالشعر. He says that the stomach that it, that the stomach of one of you will not be filled with poison until sees goodness is filling itself with evil. This is not well translated. Translate it. Basically, the meaning here is that Basically, he says that it's better for your heart to be filled with pus, now the, the the liquid inside of your of your pimples. Better than filling it up with with poetry. Now, so so here it says that. كذلك um, So he says that is that the Prophet ﷺ has alluded that the heart can be filled up with shi'r, with with poetry. Now, and this is to to. Confirm what he was saying, which is that your heart thinks. Now your heart is filled with something, depending on what you give it. So if he's given with with poetry, it will only be thinking about poetry, and it will be busy with poetry instead of of uh, of dhikr of Allah, of knowledge, beneficial knowledge, etc. Et so then he says, and this is very important here. فكذلك يمتلئ بالشبه والشكوك والخيالات والتقديرات التي لا وجود لها والعلوم التي لا تنفع والمفاك والمفاكهات والمضحكات والحكايات ونحوها. He says in the same way your heart becomes filled with doubts, um, شكوك نعم الشك الشبه الشبه والشك. Here it translated polytheism, but. A shubhu is, is basically 
things that you think you understand, but you don't understand it well. What shukuk is like, like uh, doubts. No? And al khiyalat is imaginations and assumptions. Assumptions that have no reality, along with knowledge that is useless, and jokes and fun stories and similar things. So basically, your heart will be filled. Yani, this is so deep, man. If your heart, if you consume certain information without first protecting your belief system. With قال الله وقال الرسول وقال الصحابة, with beneficial knowledge, if you don't protect it and, and put a shield around it, when you come across shubuhat, نعم, explanations of things that are not supposed to be explained like that, that now causes you doubt on certain principles of Islam, now you start having doubts, and now you start having having خيالات, imaginations of things and all of these people watching all of this anime and and all of these um, cartoons that they get addicted to what and in assumptions and and reaching beliefs upon of something that don't have a foundation and knowledge that that is not beneficial you go and yeah, I memorized this book. Okay, what, is, what was the benefit of it? I learned this, this knowledge. What is, how is that benefiting your akhirah? Well, mufakahat and, and jokes and all of these memes and all of these comedians and comedy and, and stories that, um, that are funny. Same thing with, again, going back to all of these series, and Netflix series or YouTube channel that all of these documentaries that perhaps are not haram but have no benefit whatsoever for your akhirah. So he says, And when the heart becomes filled with these things, then then the truth the truths of the Quran and the knowledge that brings completeness and happiness find no space in it. فَلَمْ تَجِدْ فِيهِ فَرَاغًا لَهَا وَلَا قَبُولًا فَتَعَدَّتْهُ وَجَوَازَتْهُ إِلَى مَحَلٍ سِوَى So then it just goes past his heart and it goes somewhere else. You fill it with all of this crap, of all of this information in in this world that we live in right now, where you open your phone and scroll, 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 your heart gets filled up with all of this non beneficial stuff, then the reality and the truth of the Quran and beneficial knowledge comes to you, but your heart is filled with all of this crap. So you don't receive it how it should be received. And this is going back to what I was saying earlier. Like when I, when now perhaps my heart is filled up because I've been busy with work and things like that. It's filled up with things. So when I read this right now, it doesn't hit me the same like when I was fully focused on the Quran. So the same thing here. When you fill it up with all of this stuff, then the heart comes, then the, the Quran comes, the ayah, the tafsir, and it doesn't hit you the same. So then he says, كَمَا إِذَا بُذِلَتِ النَّصِيحَةُ لِقَلْبٍ مَلْآنُ مِنْ ضِدِّهَا لَا مَنْفَذَ لَهَا فِيهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَقْبَلُهَا وَلَا تَلِجُ فِيهِ لَكِنْ تَمُرُّ مُجْتَازَةً لَمُسْتَوْطِنَةً He says, just like when you give nasiha to someone, or do you give nasiha to a, a heart full of opposing beliefs, it cannot find a way into it. So it passes through without being accepted or having any effect, leaving no lasting impression. 
No, I'm so it's the same thing when somebody's heart is full of heart diseases and ego and 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 beliefs and desires for for perhaps you know uh, desires for becoming someone or desires for for um, for fame or desires for whatever you might be you give them nasiha but his heart is already full, full filled up with something so he doesn't he doesn't accept it how he should uh, how it should hit him now so this is uh, this is the the faida that I had on my desktop that I'm going to delete now and perhaps later on I might put this into a more pleasing format of a video uh, if you watch until here let me know in the comments and uh, let me know what is your your take on this uh, I'll be surprised if there's someone who watched until here as this is something that uh, you know in the modern world that we live in and the type of content that's out there it, this is not the content that somebody would uh, would sit down and, and watch and listen to and benefit from so um, so yeah, I highly appreciate you and I thank you for your attention if you watch until here. And and I generally, again, I would like to know what is your take on this and I would like to see you in the comments. Reason why is because I'm trying to, it actually helps me to, to get rid of these limiting beliefs that I have, which is, which is like, oh, I cannot, for example, this, this fact that was there in my, in my desk and not in my desktop now for a month I wanted to make a beneficial piece of content about it but the thing is I don't want to make it like how I did it right now but I want to make it like you know nice and edits and these and quality and quality audio and stuff like that but the thing is sometimes there's so much benefit that's withheld from me because of having that mentality of all oh, people are not going to listen if I don't presented in a nice way which is it has a it has a, a level of truth to it but um, but there is you know those of you who who just have a, a clean heart and is ready to to listen to whatever is beneficial and, and finds it generally beneficial so it helps me see who is out there that actually watches this stuff and that um, that uh, that actually benefits because it pushes me to actually do more good and actually do more of this. So with this being said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah.